install and test this flume uh, non-intrusive uh, water meter that brings the uh, water meter into your smart home. Hello, I'm Blake, a professional innovator and designer in pursuit of the invisible smart home. Water leak alert. <coughs> Let's open the box first. There's the hub. There's the device. And I believe this uses batteries. Mr. Fax. All right, so we need to add some batteries. And that's the basics of the circuit board itself. So this straps onto the side of your meter. And I guess we have some cables. I'm not sure what that's for, but I'll figure that out. I guess an extension for the strap. And an adapter for the hub, which communicates wirelessly between here and there. That's the same protocol. All right, but before I get to the installation, I wanted to talk a bit about water meters and how they work. All right, this is the water and meter in my home, which I think I've showed in previous videos. Um, it looks like this uses the uh, nutating disc, which I'm going to show you a bit about later. But there's also uh, electronic versions of these uh, meters, but they all seem like they're non-intrusive onto the plumbing and they either get it through mechanical means, the nutating disc, or the uh, piston disc, or in the electronic versions, I guess, use uh, some form of ultrasonic uh, sensors. This is a video from Badger Meter. They make uh, various water meters uh, and other devices for uh, public utilities. I'll put a link down in the description so you can get uh, more detail on that if you want. But this shows the nutating disc type of uh, water meter. So the water meter itself, of course, is in the mechanical part of it is intrusive. You have to install it on the pipe. But once it's installed, you just snap a meter on the top. And the uh, mechanical ones are kind of cool because it doesn't look like they need any electricity whatsoever to uh, run the meter and even to get the, uh, the guy comes outside and taps his uh, reader on the end and picks up the... Uh, recent water flow or the history but let's show you now how these uh, these meters work so the hopefully our device the flume is going to strap over the side of this and just pick up from here but maybe not with all this plastic on there and it's going to be interesting to see if it still works so my water meter is in a convenient location here in the basement uh, but we're in a colder climate, so that's where they put the, uh, the water meters typically inside the home. Um, but in places like Florida, um, they have them out on the street, so they're not really as convenient to get to. So that's just something to keep in mind if you decide to uh, consider this idea. All right, to get started, it wants us to uh, download the app, and that's just what I'll do right now. All right, so I've searched and found the app, I think. It's got the same logo. So let's go ahead and install it. Okay, I'm gonna set up an account. I won't bore you with that part. I've set up the app and it uh, sent a code to my phone to verify who I was and that worked out fine. And then the app sent me down to take a picture of the water meter to confirm it was compatible. I guess it had some AI somehow that it looked at the photo and said yes it was compatible so that's good. And it's asked me here to keep the uh, the two devices close together until we're ready to the hub and the uh, the sensor itself close together until we get to uh, through the rest of the instructions here before it sends me downstairs. All right connect the power supply to the flume bridge and plug it into an outlet which I've done and uh, one other thing to note hopefully this will work in the end it asked for my location and it wouldn't let me put in a Canadian address so I had to use a Florida address so hopefully that won't uh, stop it it might right here let's find out what's uh, going on go to your phone Wi-Fi settings to connect the bridge so I'm just gonna go through these steps here and I'll get back to you and let you know if it works 
All right, so far so good. I uh, went to the process to, uh, this was set up as a an access point. I connected to the flume meter first and then bounced back to the app and it uh, went through the connection process and uh, it connected. So let's go through the rest of this setup. Okay, it's just telling me to place the sensor on your water meter, which I'm going to do. On the meter, there's a little wire here. I'm going to have to take the strap off so I can get around that. So let's see if I can figure this out. All right, looks to be against it. All right, so it's on there. Let's see what's next. Take a photo, open the meter, make sure the data is still re readable. Yeah, of course it's still readable. Let's take a photo once it's to take a photo, which I will. Okay, so it, uh, Loading the numbers, I guess it's doing run a stream of water. So we've got some water here. I can turn this on and uh, you know, somebody else is running some water upstairs as well. So I don't know if that matters. And then you can see the meter is uh, turning away. And I'm still waiting on the app. So you can get both in the view at the same time here. All right, said success. Now what happens? Okay, it says you're all set. All right, let's go play around with the app then. Well, that was, uh, that was fairly easy. All right, then it's asking me to set up a contact name in case of a leak, and I'll put my details in there. All right, if you hear snoring, don't mind that. That's my uh, French Bulldog. Not this one, but similar. All right, so uh, it's asked me to put in a name as a secondary contact. I put my son in there in case I'm away and it gets a leak alert. They'll get the notifications and I'm going to skip the tour for now. All right, so it's been running for about 24 hours now. I left the, uh, the hub in, you know, in the same room as the, the meter, but it doesn't have to be. The hub can be anywhere in the house. I think it just needs to connect to Wi-Fi. I'm not sure what communication is between this and this, but that doesn't really matter, I guess, as long as it works. Um, so let me just show you some of the uh, stats. So there's the app, and you can see today I've used 86 gallons. Right now, zero is running. Uh, something to notice here is this doesn't really seem in real time. It doesn't necessarily have to be in real time. It's probably 20 or 30 seconds behind in terms of a start. Let's just try it right now. I'm just going to turn this water on here. We'll just see how fast that turns. Still not showing it as of 127, so it doesn't really show it right away at all. And then when I turn it off, you'll see it runs, continues to show that it's running when it isn't running. So let's just let it get to the point. It should show it by now. So it's not really real time at all. It said 30 seconds, it might be a minute. All right, so I backed out and went back in. I guess it just didn't refresh that page. But there, but let me just turn the water off. And of course, that's not real time either. That doesn't stop. So let's just uh, back out and come back in again and see. 
no nope, it still shows the water running so it's not really good for that in most cases that doesn't matter if i want to see if the water is running in real time i can just check out my camera that i have here pointing and i'll just see the red triangle spinning but anyway you can see let's just take a look at some history so you can see this is yesterday here where i installed it around 1 p.m and this is the water usage since then and let's just look at the new day so starting at 5 a.m it looks like somebody got up and used the bathroom and somebody was up at six and used it longer and I know at 8 o'clock somebody was in the shower and somebody and the laundry was running at the same time so there was a lot of, a lot of water used at uh, at 8 a.m. Anyway, you can get kind of a pattern there. It's funny there, it still shows the water running, of course it is not running. And let's just go down so you can set a monthly budget. I guess in places where water is, uh, conservation is important, places like California, this will help you uh, manage your water usage. Um, and you can set an um, activity away mode, and I think that's where it gives you the certain type of leak alert uh, that it wouldn't give you otherwise. Let's just go look at some of the other options. All right, so we were just in the dashboard. What's this about? All right, I guess this is just a more detailed use of your water usage graph. And it shows you the average hourly and a maximum. Let's check out notifications. Okay, so it doesn't show any notifications. We haven't received any. Let's check settings. Okay, so you can change your profile about who you are and your location. And it didn't seem to have a problem with me being in Canada, except it wouldn't let me use a Canadian ask, uh, address. Uh, usage profile, I guess you can add other users. And this is the profile of your different, uh, um, you know, faucets and bathrooms in the home. And you can add or change those so that it has a better profile it looks like in notifications you can turn on different notifications usage alerts budget alerts bridge wi-fi down alerts water sensor batteries and uh, water sensor move that's kind of cool i guess it knows if it's been moved and uh, push notifications water sensor move same thing and uh, usage alerts so it looks like there's two alerts you can get to do with a uh, leak so there's a low flow uh, leak that if it's more than two hours you'll get an alert and that doesn't really seem uh, great because of course you don't want to leak for any amount of time certainly not two hours and then there's a high flow uh, leak alert if it's five gallons per minute for 15 minutes or more you'll get an alert so that's good you'll get an alert if there's like a burst pipe or something so in conclusion some good points about this it was a very easy uh, installation you basically just strapped it on here and set up the app and you were good to go um, it comes with the batteries. It would be a good option if it also had the option to plug in for locations where it's convenient so you didn't have to rely on the, uh, the batteries. They're good for two years for the single battery pack and you can buy a second battery pack which they say is good up to uh, four years. Um, the batteries are proprietary which I, you know, you can decide if that's good or bad for you. I guess as long as you can get a hold of the batteries you probably maybe the might overpay for batteries like that but I like at least they're making sure you get the right uh, batteries to give it the optimum um, usage um, what I don't like about it is that it doesn't really have a way to connect to other home automations at least as far as I can tell an easy way as an example to you know shut off the bulldog in the case of a leak so we have a z-way version of the bulldog that works with smart things and other hubs it would be nice if there were some kind of connection to smart things or other uh, environments so that you could get a message and your smart home could automatically shut off the water when I got a leak. Um, the thing about leak alerts is it really doesn't have a very sophisticated way to detect uh, leaks. I think they could do more and they're probably working on it, but you know, running for two hours, you know, you, what you really want is when there's every, any unusual flow in the home that it sees, you shouldn't have to wait two hours to decide if it's unusual. You know to shut off the water so there's probably some ways to improve that and that's probably something they're working on it makes sense um, even as a add a, um, a really out, output to this to connect to our uh, bulldog or other systems so that when the relay out was on the hey that's a leak alert and then you could decide what to do with your other automation system um, but for uh, for what it, you want it for just to check water flow and for some i guess some uh, extreme uh, leak uh, notifications 
it's a it's a good solution, and it's great that it can only you just have to strap it on to the uh, the device. There's there's no moving parts involved. Of course, that worked out well here for my home in Florida, where the water meter is on the street and it's covered by a steel uh, grate. I don't think it would even work with communications. That's it. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and uh, look for my next video.